Nestled amid the dramatic karst scenery of southern China lies the colorful city of Liuzhou, which will once again host the UIM F1H20 World Championship as the 2016 season heats up in round five. Located in Guangxi province in a semi-tropical part of southern China, Liuzhou is one of the most picturesque corners of China, offering iconic images of the breathtaking Chinese countryside that is spruced with majestic karsts through which flows the great Liu River. Liuzhou is a verdant landscape dotted with lush parks, a vibrant fishing and water culture, and beautiful age-old temples that point to a proud and illustrious history spanning thousands of years. Liuzhou is also a teeming metropolis of over a million inhabitants, a bustling, dynamic and sophisticated city that breaks out into a carnival of colors and lights at night as the skyscrapers light up and the young population heads out on the streets to shop, eat, relax and party till the early hours. More than all else, they love their motorsports, as for over two decades China has hosted the UIM F1H20 World Championship, drawing tens of thousands year after year. The event also featured the Aquabike World Championship and F4 Racing, all part of national celebrations marked annually with their renowned water sports festival, which draws crowds to Jinglan Water Sports Center from all over China. First, let's take a look back at what happened in the previous round. Round 4 was raced in Harbin, China, a brand new venue on the UIM F1H20 World Championship Tour. In the BRM qualifying, Ahmed Al Hamili's fastest lap was cancelled for a course infringement which gave pole position to Sami Celio. He got off to a strong start to lead the field from the get-go, chased by his teammate Philip Roms, who took a best-ever second-place result in qualifying. Behind Roms was Alex Carella, who battled the young Finn for second position. But the fight proved disastrous for both as they crashed out in lap 24, giving second place to Jonas Anderson. Problems in qualifying meant Philip Schiap and Sean Torrente had to start at the back of the field but they produced a stunning display as they rose up the field, picking one boat after the other, Shiap eventually moving up into third and Torrente fourth. Sami Celio brought his boat home for a start to finish win that ended his spell of bad luck since last year. Anderson on the podium in second, Shiap third, Torrente fourth. Shiap goes into Liju atop the world standings with Torrente in second, Corella dropping to third and Celio up in fourth. There are 18 drivers from nine teams competing at the Grand Prix of Liuzhou. Local favorites, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team are under pressure here in home waters, but they have momentum on their side. The only Chinese racer on the tour is heartthrob Zhang Ziwei, who will count on local support in Liuzhou. His teammate is defending two-time world champion, Philip Schiap, who leads the world standings going into round five and with just two rounds to go, is closer than ever to getting a hat-trick. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, it's like my home. A uh, nice hospitality for my team, for me, for my guys. And uh, for me, it's a dream. But uh, for, the, for the race, I think uh, we do uh, a safe race because we are leader of the championship and now it's not the same uh, uh, position to Arbin. But... <laughs> I'm very confident and I think we can make a good result. Just seven points behind Shiap is Sean Torrente of Victory Team, 
a driver who is more than capable of upsetting Shep's best laid plans. He's been getting more comfortable with his new boat as he improves race by race, having nabbed three podiums this year. The Team Abu Dhabi juggernaut is led by three-time world champion Alex Corella, who is third in the world standings, 10 points behind Schiap. After his no-points finish in Harbin, it's crucial he gets on the podium here if he's to keep his world title hopes alive. After his win last round in Harbin, Matt Croc Baba Racing Team Sammy Celio is also now a contender for the world title, having moved up to fourth on 35 points. Liu Zhao has had mixed fortunes for Celio, but it's also where he had a horrendous crash that has haunted him for years. Luckily, I don't remember so much from the accident and some years behind me, so... But of course, this is the place where I almost lost my life, so... Of course, it's sometimes in the mind, but never when you put the helmet on and go in the boat. The new boat, I get used to it every race more and more. Now I... Last race uh, was the first race I finished with the new style of Baba, and I'm happy with it. Of course, need to tune a little bit more, find the, the, the all out of the boat, but uh, I think we're getting close. Having his best season in years is former China Grand Prix winner Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden, who wants to build on his runner-up finish in Harbin. For sure we, we want to be on the podium, but we have been four and four and four, and last race we were number two, so it's coming better and better. And for this race we have a brand new engine, so hopefully it's a good one, so anything can happen. Emirates team is formidable, with two sensational drivers who are always a threat to the top teams. Eric Stark of Sweden is looking for his first Grand Prix win. And Ahmed Al Hamali is a six-time Grand Prix winner, but he hasn't won a race in five years, during which he's battled brain cancer. He wants to get back to his winning ways and find the form that had made him so formidable. The Liuju circuit on the Liu River is 2,020 meters long with five left-handers and one right-hander. It's a nice course, it's a fast course. Uh, we all like speed and, uh, and fast courses and um, it's easy at the same time. It's not such a difficult course. The yellow is like I, I like, it's a fast yellow, so that's what we want. BRM qualifying, three qualifying sessions would determine the starting grid. The field is reduced to 12 boats in Q1, with the final six being determined in Q2. In Q3, the boats have two laps and the course themselves to set their fastest lap times in their bid for pole position. I was sleeping two races, now I wake up in this race and I try my best to get and qualify. Well, it's very tight in the top. Uh, I think last last race there was uh, at least 10 boats within the same second, so it's it's tight to come into the top six, but uh, we will do our best. In Q1, place performance teams Francesco Cantando and Bartek Marsalek were struggling with technical issues and were off the pace. Normally a top six regular, Jonas Anderson was also tackling mechanical issues and was unable to set any times bumping him down to last in 18th position. F1 rookie Mike Simura made it into his first ever Q2, progressing in 11th position for EMIC team. This was the first race where he'd be starting with the big boys. Zhang Ziwei produced an excellent late flourish to qualify for Q2 in 9th position. Unable to make the cut were Jesper Fors of Team Sweden, Nadir Benhendi of Victory Team, and Mad Croc Baba Racing Team's Philip Roms. In Q2, Marit Stromoy and her team EMIC mechanics spent most of the session on the pontoon trying to solve an engine issue and she was able to make it out with just minutes to go but could not find the space on the course to put down a good lap. Timing a hot lap and avoiding traffic is key to Q1 and Q2 success. She missed out in 7th with Tania Alkamzi settling for 8th. Duarte Benevente and Christophe Larigo of F1 Atlantic team, Zhang Ziwei and Mike Shimura took 9th to 12th spots. Q3, Torrente went out first on the course, setting a lap time of 46.81. Following Torrente is 25-time pole position winner, Sammy Celio. 
he produced an excellent time of 46.17, beating Torrente, but would it be enough for pole? Ahmed Al Hamali was out next, determined to prove himself after having pole snatched from him last event because of a boy infringement. His first lap time was off target, but he was flying in his second lap to set a blistering time of 46.05. Beat that. Next up, Alex Corella had a big target set for him. The 12 time pole position winner was extremely fast 46.06, just one hundredth of a second off the pace. Al Hamily retains provisional pole. Philip Schiap was the next out. The Frenchman is known as being the fastest out there on the day. He lived up to his reputation, 46.05. He tied Al Hamily's time. Just one more to go, Eric Stark. But he was unable to find that kind of speed, making do with a time of 46.34. With Schiap and Al Hamily tied on best laps, their second laps would count. Al Hamily had the faster second lap, and therefore, pole position. So it's improved. For the last race, I don't care about the cup, but I'm care, I care about myself and what I do and how I job. How's my job? Thank you for all my team. They work really hard. They prepare the, the boat after last crash. Ahmed Al Hamali gets his 10th career pole position. Great result for Emirates Racing Team. Shiap starts second on the grid, followed by Corella, Celio, Stark, and Torrente. Joe welcomed the F1H2O family with yet another of their famous gala dinners as teams and drivers got the chance to unwind and enjoy some Chinese hospitality. Race day. The morning started with practice, where teams had a last chance to dial in crucial setups for the race. Ah, uh, just trying to get a, uh, you know, a, what you want is a propeller that's going to be the fastest off the beach and around the course. That doesn't happen, so just taking a mix between the two, depending on where you're starting. So for me, I need I need a little bit of lap time too because I got to pass some boats. So uh, just trying to find that mix. I think I found a good compromise. You got to be the best in the race, which, in my opinion, we've been the best in the race just about every race this year. With the new boat, we just haven't qualified good enough, so I think we're okay though. Sammy Celio was having engine issues as Mad Croc Baba Racing Team worked frantically to solve the problem, trying to figure out what was wrong with just a few hours left to race time. With just minutes to go to race time, final preparations were completed in scorching 40 degree heat and 77% humidity, which would surely take a toll on both the performance of the engines and the drivers in the 50 lap race on the Liu River. The two time defending world champion Philip Schiap would be starting just behind Ahmed Al Hamali, knowing he'd have to drive smart and safe to maintain his advantage over world championship rivals Corella, Celio and Torrente behind him. The man with the biggest target on his back, Ahmed Al Hamali, starting in pole position for Emirates Racing Team, trying to get a first win in five years. A little bit pressure, but I think uh, during the morning, my start is like super strong, so let's see in the race. The starting grid, Al Hamali with Schiap, Corella, Celio, Stark and Torrente beside him. A hell of a crowd to fight off. Stromoy starts in 7th, behind her Al Kamzi, Benevente, Xiong, Roms back in 16th and Jonas Anderson with a lot of racing ahead of him in 18th. The final seconds tick away, the tension mounts, the crowds wait with bated breath as they await the start. The lights go out, the race is on. Bad start from Alex Corella. <laughs> Who watches as Shiap and Celio leave him behind in the sprint to the first turn. 
Sean Torrente drag racing Eric Stark to his port side. Torrente pulling ahead of the Swedish Emirates racing team rider in a good start for the Blue Victory boat as the boats try and hold their lanes on the approach to the commitment buoy. Al Hamily successfully fends off all challengers as he gets there first with Shiop right behind him, followed by Celio who pulls ahead of Corella. Jonas Anderson in last position lets the field get by him and then once he's past the buoy, he's able to cut in on the inside, moving past Jesper Fors, Philip Roms and Nader Bin Hendy as he begins his ascent up the field. In the lead, Ahmed Al Hamili, who's chased by Philip Schiap in second and Celio in third, who bumped Carella down to fourth. Eric Stark passed by Sean Torrente, eating the American spray. Stark bumped down to sixth, and Torrente is very fast as he powers away in his moor boat. Coming around the yellow right-hander, Al Hamili leading proceedings as he's chased by three world champions with eight world titles between them. In fifth position, Torrente challenges Alex Corella, but Corella holds off his former teammate. As the boats come around on the first of 50 laps, drivers know they'll need to pace themselves in this stifling tropical heat where cockpits can reach 70 degrees Celsius. Moritz Stromoy in eight is chasing two-time China Grand Prix winner Daniel Kamzi of Team Abu Dhabi in seventh, the Norwegian female driver right on his tail. Further back, Jonas Anderson continues to climb through the field as he sets his targets on Zhang Ziwei. He overhauls the Chinese driver on the right-hander and also passes Francesco Cantando as he moves up into 11th position behind Mike Simura. Bartek Marsalek pulls off the course and Philip Roms on his outside just narrowly avoids slamming into the Polish Blaze Performance Team driver who appears to be in trouble. At the end of lap one, Al Hamili maintains his lead and excellent start to this race, chased by Schiap, Celio, Corella, Torrente and Stark. Big dogfight further back between Mike Simora and Jonas Anderson as the German rookie tries to fend off the multiple Grand Prix winning veteran from Sweden who manages to make short work of Sumura on the right-hander as he moves toward the top 10. Anderson now eyes Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team up ahead. The Swedish four-time Grand Prix winner moves in on the Portuguese veteran as they come around race buoy one. Anderson on the outside, Benevente holding a tight inside line as they head toward the yellow right-hander. Benevente ducking and weaving to dodge the Swede, who's held off as they hurtle down that 437 meter straightaway to race buoy five. Anderson maintains incredible speed through that turn, going head to head with Benevente, but Benevente just nudges him aside on turn six as they enter another long 522 meter drag race to race buoy one. But Anderson has the speed on the outside. Anderson does it. Anderson bids bye-bye to Benevente as he continues his upward climb, already settling into that top 10. Meanwhile, in the lead, Ahmed Al Hamili opens the gap with Shiap. The recovering Emirati has overcome so much over the last five years, battling cancer and trying to find the form of his early days on the tour. While arguably the best driver on the tour for the past three years, the indomitable two-time world champion Philip Shiap hounds him down. Behind them, Sean Torrente still trying to get the jump on Alex Corella. Torrente in fifth, Corella in fourth. The two former teammates and world championship rivals knowing that every point counts with just two more races to go after Liu Zhu and so few points separating the top drivers. Anderson moving in on Moritz Stromoy, looking for a way past the Norwegian driver in the number 50 EMIC boat. He comes in on the inside, looking for an opening, but Stromoy shuts him out and fends the speeding Swede off her tail as they head down the longest straightaway on the circuit. 11 laps down, Stromoy in eighth, with Anderson looking to put another notch in his belt after already climbing halfway up the field with 39 laps to go. Meanwhile, Team Abu Dhabi ace Alex Corella in fourth and giving chase to Sami Celio, the winner of the last round in Harbin. Sammy Celio has had a terrible time since mid-2000. Oh. 
but he has since bounced back to become a real contender for the world title in 2016. Contando is out. The 12-time Grand Prix winner retires in lap 11. The battle for eighth place heats up as Anderson goes neck and neck with Moritz Stromoy, but the Norwegian driver keeps cool and steady to fend the Swede off one more time. There it is on the replay. Very close as Stromoy dives in and shuts Anderson out. But Stromoy has an engine problem as she slows down and relinquishes eighth place to Jonas Anderson. Bad luck also for Corella. The Italian's fourth world title hopes take a serious blow here, and Team Abu Dhabi is in dismay. Stromoy is also out. Uh, the engine is, uh, is finished, I think. I think I broke the engine. Ahmed Al Hamli maintains a few seconds lead over the French master behind him. The Emirati driver smooth, calm and steady for 22 laps as he tries to fend off perhaps the fastest boat, the fastest driver and the best team in F1 H2O racing. Siap stays in contact, looking for any chance to pass, any mistake, any sign of weakness. As Siap laps Nader Ben Hendy, back markers may pose major problems for the front runners, which could prove crucial with just less than four seconds separating Al Hamali from Siap. With Corella out, Daniel Kamzi is the sole Abu Dhabi boat left, and he's feeling the pressure mounting from behind as Anderson zeroes in on the Emirati ace in the DAC boat, designed and built by Team Abu Dhabi manager Guido Capellini. While Anderson takes on Al Kamzi, Ahmed Al Hamali is already on the point of lapping the boats as Al Hamali holds on to his lead in his bid for a first race win in five years. But there's a lot of traffic, and with Anderson focused on Al Kamzi, Al Hamali having trouble squeezing through the field as Anderson doesn't give an inch. And this poses problems now for Al Hamali, who's in danger of seeing that four second lead over Shiap erode quickly unless he can get through those back markers fast and smooth. Sure enough, Shiap closes the gap to under two seconds with 16 laps to go as China team urges him on, but Al Hamali holds on, keeping his cool. This time Al Hamali comes up on Christophe Larigo. This may slow him down yet more and could prove disastrous unless Al Hamali can find a way around the Frenchman quick. Fortunately, Larigo sees him and gives him room as Al Hamali passes, but Shiap is now very close after Al Hamali goes too wide. Lap after lap, Al Hamali digs himself out of trouble, and with just seven laps left in this long, hard, hot race, the limits of human and mechanical endurance are truly being tested out there. Back in seventh, it seems Anderson's progress has been checked by the wily Al Kamzi with just five laps to go. Last lap, Al Hamali has done it in a team that's just two years old that has endured so many setbacks. A driver who's been through a long, hard and painful struggle of five years, Ahmed Al Hamali is back, the Liuzhou Grand Prix winner of 2016. The years of work, the overwhelming obstacles, the life and death struggle leave one man standing victorious, Ahmed Al Hamali. Shiap runner-up, Celio third, Torrente fourth, Anderson comes in at seventh. And Mike Simura with two points earned in ninth. <laughs> she up extends his lead to 13 points atop the world standings. Torrente second, Sammy Celio moving up to third on 47 points as Corella drops to fourth. Al Hamali moves up to sixth, Benevente and Stark tied on 19 points apiece. Simura with four points in his first year. Uh, yes, it's very hard. the condition is good on the water, but it's very hot and uh, I fight uh, with uh, Ahmed, it's uh, very funny, I like, but at the end I lose my uh, power team and I finish uh, completely dead and it's very hard, I'm very tired. Now uh, we do prepare Abu Dhabi and uh, okay. Yeah, race was really, really tough. I get a good start. I was hoping that because I, in the morning I had some technical problems and uh, I couldn't really test the start. But the guys were so fast in the front, couldn't take. <laughs> oh. 
them uh, more close, so need to be happy to finish in the podium again. In the team standings, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team is 11 points up on Mad Croc Baba Racing in second with Victory Team completing the top three ahead of Team Abu Dhabi and Emirates Racing Team, Team Sweden sixth. Really amazing uh, weekend for me. Big fight from yesterday, qualifying and the free practice also. That make me the boat is like as stronger boat and he, he sponsored me by his hand his uh, money, everything, and a uh, big kiss for him, and uh, I'm good. Yeah, it's very nervous for me, but I know just as a driver before to keep him calm and focused, and I know him, it's the best. I mean, this has been a long time coming for me as a, as a miracle, his comeback, and he's worked hard the last four years to come back from a huge operation, and he did it today. And, and proved a lot of people wrong and I'm so proud and proud to be a part of it and proud to be with Hamid. That concludes a thrilling round five in China. See you in Abu Dhabi and Sharjah as the F1H20 flag is passed on to the United Arab Emirates for the final two rounds of the 2016 UIM F1H20 World Championship.